العالي من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dearest viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome to another session on du'as digging deeper where we've been reflecting on the excellent and exquisite du'a that we recite in this holy month of Ramadan and that is the one that begins with the line Allahumma adkhil ala ahlin qubur al-surur We've been using this terrific book Manifestations of the Ummah for which I hope you are now all very much familiar with by Shaykh Al-Fan to guide us through this exquisite du'a that we can reflect on. And in this session, inshallah, we will dig into the next line, which is, Allahumma sudda faqrana bi ghinaq. O Allah, fill our poverty with your needlessness. Now, versus the other lines in this du'a, this line doesn't typically come across as one that is as obvious as, for example, Oh Allah, free the captive, Oh Allah, uh, cure those who are sick, etc. This one doesn't immediately have uh, a quick and easy thing to understand from it. It does need a little bit of like, like almost like a double take. Oh Allah, fill our poverty with your needlessness. It's not that straightforward. So, Let's dive into it, and I will just frame this from the very beginning, which is that having read through Sheikh Al Fan's comments and the way in which he constructs his thoughts and commentary on this line, it really comes across as one that changes the way in which we can see our Lord. And it can really transform it and cement it within our understanding of Tawheed, which is, of course, the core of our faith. So it's one to really reflect on, one to really concentrate on. And Sheikh Afan goes into a lot of detail in the book, or a little bit more detail than we'll go through in, in the book. And it's really like, as far as the previous sessions go, it's a graduation, almost like starts to conclude what feels to be our understanding of our Lord. So let's jump straight into it. Oh Allah, fill our poverty with your needlessness. Allahumma sudda faqrana bighinaq. Now, firstly, we need to understand that this line does not pertain to the need of commonly needy individuals, i.e. those who you and I would typically see as those who are in poverty. Oh Allah, fill our poverty with your needlessness. It's not just about those who we typically see and understand to be in the state of poverty, i.e. those who are maybe uh, cash poor or do not have shelter, do not have warmth. And we've discussed this in previous sessions already. Actually, this is a need that is required by every single human being, bar none, zero exception. Or now as we as understand it, and as we've started to understand it in our previous sessions, as we've led, led up into this one, it's something that every contingent being needs. And you and I, we are all contingent beings, i.e. the one who possesses nothing of their own, which is, of course, every creation within the universe. So we are in need. We are in a state of poverty that requires this needlessness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as I've mentioned, it's a reality check for those of us who feel that we're in a state of everything's all good, there's no issues, I'm facing no challenges, I've got the money in the bank, I've got the house, I've got my family, I've got my health, I am settled, I am not needful of anything. It's a stark reminder that, especially once we finish our understanding of this, that of course we are completely contingent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this line is very much pertaining to us especially. So, this needlessness, or as the line says, غناك, غناء, this needlessness is not the same as the needlessness or the self-sufficiency that someone not in poverty may think that they have. So the way that I think that I am not in need of anything and that I am self-sufficient is not the same understanding. This غناك is entirely restricted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only being, the only thing that is not in need of anything. I may be self-sufficient, and we'll come on to whether I actually am or not. I may feel I'm self-sufficient in this life, but in reality, I still have a need. I still required the ability to have my heart 
beating. And that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, from him alone. However, the self-sufficiency of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is like none other. This ghina is like no other. And it's only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's restricted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in fact, when we then actually ponder and really understand the relationship between the creator and the creation, this notion of self-sufficiency no longer exists. When we really understand it, when we really reflect on it, this notion of a human being self-sufficient becomes entirely redundant and false because we're completely reliant on Allah. We are, as we said, we are contingent. Our existence is contingent and is dependent completely upon our creator. And I just want to, and Sheikh Al-Fan, I should say, really hammers this point home with some strong evidence, both from Quran and from supplications from Adam Muhammad. And I think it's really important that we go through these just to really hammer and cement this point home that we are completely contingent upon Allah and it all comes from Allah and Allah is the only one that is self-sufficient and there is no ifs or buts to this. So we start in surah number 35, verse number 15. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhan nas, antumul fuqara'u ilallah, wallahu huwa al hamid. And we mentioned this in a previous session as well. Translation being, oh mankind, you are the ones who stand in need of Allah, and Allah, he is the all-sufficient, the all-laudable. So firstly, we see very clearly again, and these are all just to hammer home the point that we are completely dependent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Second one, surah number 22, verse 64. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Lahuma fil-samawati wa ma fil-ard wa inna Allah la to him only belongs what is in the heavens and what is in the earth. And indeed, Allah is the all-sufficient, the all-laudable. Again, same theme, and we don't need to go into more detail. This is more to just reiterate the point. So now we've seen two lines in Quran talking about this uh, self-sufficiency that Allah has and that we do not have and that we're completely dependent on him. We now look to a beautiful du'a, a personal favorite du'a of mine, which I discovered whilst on Hajj, and of course that is Dua Arafah by Abu Abdullah al Hussein, where the Dua says, "Ilahi, an al fakiru fi ghinai, fakayfa la akunu fakiran fi fi fakri." Oh God, and this line is incredible. Oh God, I am the poor in my self sufficiency. Therefore, how can I not be needy in my state of need? This is exceptional. Oh God, oh God, I am the poor in my self-sufficiency. So when I'm self-sufficient, when I think I'm self-sufficient, when I get to this mindset that I think I'm self-sufficient, I am poor even in that moment. I'm still reliant upon you. And therefore, how can I not be needy in my state of need? Imam Ali alayhi salam in the Munajat that we so famously recite, in the nights of Qadr, uh, on the 19th, 21st nights, where we commemorate his shahada, it says, Mawlai, ya Mawlai, anta al-ghani wa ana al-faqir, wa hal yarham al-faqir illa al-ghani. My master, my master, you are the all-sufficient, and I am the needy. And who other than the all-sufficient can have mercy on the needy? And finally, I go to the, we go to the dua that is recommended after Salat al-Asr, and where we introduce ourselves as who. So now we've realized, of course, now I've hammered the point home that we are completely reliant upon Allah, full stop. He is the only self-sufficient. There's no such thing as a creation of Allah being self-sufficient because we are always dependent and contingent upon him. In this line, we now say, لا يملك لنفس نفع ولا ضر ولا موت ولا حياة ولا نشورة. One who does not, we introduce ourselves as the one who does not own any benefit, nor harm, nor death, nor life, nor resurrection. Case and point. We are completely dependent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence now when we see the sign, oh Allah, fill, up, fill our poverty with your needlessness, it starts to click. All of what we've been discuss discussing over these last 
sessions now starts to click a little bit more and more and it's still affirming this notion of Tawheed, this oneness and endless, this oneness of Allah and his endless and infinite existence. So now we recognize this, a question becomes, which is just how dependent upon that self-sufficient being are we actually? We realize that we're completely reliant, that there's no such thing as us being self-sufficient anymore, but just how reliant are we to what extent? This faqrana that is used in this line, this poverty, it's not poverty by how we understand it. It refers to the utterly dependent state of the human being, which we've been calling contingent. And anything that exists except for Allah, and this is beautiful, anything that exists, exists except for Allah doesn't have an existence of its own because it's reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Only Allah has its own existence. We don't have our own existence. It's entirely reliant upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Us coming into existence required the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're trying to understand just how reliant upon him we are. And we're saying that even us coming into existence required his will. And that our existence is nothing if it's not for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But is it only just when we come into this world that we're reliant upon Allah? Because once our heart's beating, once our body's going, some people would say, look, I've been brought into life. Now it's down to my body. Now it's down to what I eat, how I exercise, how do I take care of myself, etc. Is it just that first moment that's when we're reliant? Mullah Sadra, he asserts something beautiful that helps clear this. And I'm sure it's clear in our head, but just to really clear it. And this is to answer the question of just how reliant upon him we are. He says that every contingent being, you and I, the creation, every contingent being receives existence in every single moment. And an example is used to illustrate this, because it's a very theoretical thing that we're in every single moment required, or we require this existence from Allah, we require this help or this uh, we require something from Allah to stay in existence. So he uses, or there's an example that's used to illustrate this. And it says that when a child looks to a candle, when a child looks to a flickering candle, what does the child see? What does a child see? They see a single flame flickering. Just one flame flickering. That's what they see. But in reality, when we study the science behind it, we of course come to realize that this isn't just one flame, but actually this is one flame and another and another and another and another and so on and so on and so on. There's a series of different flames that are there, appearing and disappearing moment by moment. And similarly, you and I as contingent beings, and every contingent being is just like this flame. We may only see a heart beating which initially required Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But actually in every second that we exist, in every second where we are here, we are being kept in existence by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's upon him we are entirely contingent and upon nothing else. Not just at the moment where we're brought into this world, but through every single second, just like that flickering candle where a flame comes and goes, comes and goes, comes and goes, we may only see one involvement of Allah, but in reality, it's every single second we're receiving this sustenance, this rizq, this ability to exist. We're entirely dependent upon him. And the moment Allah says, that's it, time's up, flame's out, that second flame won't come. And similarly, our second breath won't come. We're completely reliant upon him. And this is a striking thing to realize because it changes the way or it graduates the way in which we see and then converse with our Lord. It's no longer a transactional thing of, you know what? I'm going to pray for this to happen and then I'm going to expect it. Rather, we strip it back and we say, I'm going to thank and be content 
and appreciates that you're letting me exist in the first place, let alone what my Christmas list of wishes looks like. I've got to firstly focus on the fact that you're giving me this subsistence, this ability to exist in the very first place. I need to appreciate that for a first moment. I need to reflect on that before I even start getting out my list of, you know, desires and wishes and wants. It changes the way in which we see it. And it makes us question, are we even being grateful enough to our Lord or not? And with this understanding, we pose the question of, okay, fine. So what are we actually seeking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this verse? Now we've understood this theory. When we say, Allahumma sudda faqrana bi ghinaq, when we say, oh Allah, fill our poverty with your needlessness, what is it that we're actually asking from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now, to understand this, we must analyze one of these sublime names of Allah, and that is As-Samad, the one who is besought and every entity returns to him for any need that we have. Imam Hussain is reported to have said that As-Samad is one who has no hollowness, i.e. one who is compact, who has no gaps. Due to his infinite existence, he has no gaps in his Ability. There is no gap in his. There is no gap of deficiency in any of his perfections. It's entirely compact. If he is all knowing, then he knows everything, and there's no gaps in his understanding or knowledge. If he is all powerful, then there is nothing. There's no more power that he can gain. He's infinite in that power. Unlike us, where we are completely hollow, where we have deficiencies, where we have gaps within us, we are deficient. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not. So back to the point, what are we really asking for when we ask Allah to fill up our, exist- our existential poverty with his existential affluence? Two understandings. One, one understanding is for us as humans to go and seek perfection through utter and complete submission towards our Lord glory and exalted be to him, such that we're able to gain sufficiency through the absolutely sufficient, al-ghani. Now this is powerful. One understanding is that for us as humans, for us to seek perfection through utter and complete submission to Allah. Why? Because we're saying that we have these gaps. We have these deficiencies. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not. He is compact. He is a summit. He has it all. He's all encompassing. And therefore to patch up our gaps, we go to the one that has no gaps. We go towards him. And this helps us seek perfection. But to do this, we must submit completely to him because we now acknowledge that he has none of these gaps. So we submit to that. And I'd just like to read from Hadith Al-Qudsi. And I'll just read this word for word for us. Where it says, O offspring of Adam, I am the all-sufficient and will never become needy. Obey me and I will make you all-sufficient such that you'll never become needy. O offspring of Adam, I am all-living and will never die. Obey me and I will make you all living and you will never die. O offspring of Adam, I say to a thing, be and it is. Obey me in what I have commanded you and I will make you such that when you say be to a thing, it would come into being. And to reach this highest point, of course, it requires a journey that we must go on that is guided by Ahlul Bayt and the Qur'an. And we mentioned this in the last session when we said that Nabi Isa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about all of these exceptional attributes, exceptional miracles that Nabi, that Nabi Isa alayhi salam was able to conduct. And that was solely through بِإِذْنَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the permission of Allah. And we also looked at the ability of Ali ibn Abi Talib to lift up the door of Khaybar and the way he discusses that, and that it's completely linked to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the ability to do this. Similarly, here we see in Hadith al-Qudsi, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling, O children of Adam, that you can do this. 
you can do this so long as it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that enables you to do so. It's powerful. When we realize our summit, that he is completely compact and has all of this and encapsulates all of it. And that we have our gaps, we turn submissive whilst we seek perfection can only come through him. And a second understanding when we recite this line of Allahumma sudda faqrana bighinaq is that in order to seek this greater perfection of divine attributes that we may already possess. That it's for us to seek greater perfection of these divine attributes. And we understand this to be a never-ending seeking and yearning. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his nature is infinite. And in his every attribute that he has is infinite. Thus our goal of reaching closer and closer and closer to him in every way that we think about it must also then be an infinite and unlimited journey as well. When we want to go and seek, when we recognize that we have these gaps and that Allah doesn't, that is one understanding that we become submissive to him. And then when we go to the next step, which is to start to journey towards him, we realize that that journey is endless and unlimited. Why? Because Allah is unlimited and endless and infinite in himself. It never ends. We're always swimming. We're always swimming through this ocean to try and reach and understand those attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to do this, we continue to try and learn and study and better ourselves so we can increase our ma'rifah of, of him. Because once you increase your ma'rifah of something that is unlimited, you realize that there's more to increase and more to increase and more to increase. And it's a never ending cycle. So we submit ourselves to the one who is needless. And we submit as the ones who are in absolute poverty each and every one of us, us contingent beings. And we realize that we will therefore always be in this state of submission to the one who is unlimited and infinite. Why? Because we have all these deficiencies and gaps, whereas our summit is all encompassing and compact. And to fill them, we look to him and to him only. And in his essence is unlimited in all of his attributes. And when all of this comes together and pieces together, our understanding of our Lord begins to change. Our relationship with our Lord then begins to change as well. And I use this example perhaps just to conclude. And that is the relationship, for example, between the mother who looks after their unborn for nine months. They're constantly nurturing and looking after this unborn for nine months. Anything that they need that unborn is completely reliant upon the mother. And of course, the mother is entirely reliant upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is only possible through the will of Allah. But this nine, this nine month journey for this unborn, where they're entirely reliant for nutrition, for safety, for warmth, for everything upon the mother. We see that when that child comes out of the womb and until that child's last breath, they are in awe of their mother, that they are in gratitude to their mother, that they can never ever repay their mother. Similarly, for us as the ones who are entirely dependent upon Allah, not just for nine months, not just for nine years, but for the entire duration of our existence, we're reliant upon the one who nurtures us and looks after us and takes care of us and who gives us everything that we need with no ifs or buts. When we see how the child then has a relationship with its mother, one of love and gratitude, what about the one who gave us everything and even gave our mother the permission to give us sustenance? What is our relationship with him? What is our level of gratitude with him? Is it sufficient or is it not? The answer is, is that it's never sufficient. Why? Because we recognize that we're in an unlimited pursuit 
of his magnificence, of his greatness, and that we are completely dependent upon something infinite and unlimited. We can never be too grateful to our Lord for what he has given us. Thus we submit to him in awe and we tremble out of fear of his magnanimity, of his greatness. And this is why we recite this line, Allahumma sudda faqrana bighinak. O oh Allah, fill our poverty, fill our gaps that we're aware of, fill our deficiencies that we're aware of with your needlessness, your ghina. And this brings us to the end of this exquisite line of the du'a, a really powerful line of the du'a that really helps us cement our tawheed. And Sheikh Al-Fan goes into more detail behind our existence, the existence that is optional and that is obligatory, etc. And I highly recommend that you take the time to read through it. But inshallah, at this point we conclude and I hope that you can enjoy, you can join us on the next sessions of this supplication. والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته